Okay, that thumbnail is just clickbait. Chris Pratt hasn't done anything wrong. Except lose his southern accent halfway through the movie. Like, what the f I remember when the trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy first came out, everyone was going nuts. It was edgy and funny with superheroes we had never seen before on screen. Guardians of the Galaxy created a unique aesthetic and feel that was new to Marvel movies at the time. That, combined with James Gunn's comedy and use of music, really set this movie apart in Marvel's Phase 2. The use of comedy in... 80s music really influenced future superhero movies like Thor 3, Whedon's Justice League, and David Ayer's Suicide Squad. In fact, the head honchos at Warner Brothers were so mesmerized by Gunn's success that they ended up hiring this guy to spearhead their DC universe. But that's a whole nother story we don't have to get into right now. The point is, James Gunn helped shape the superhero genre into what it is today for better or for worse. What really set this movie apart from the rest of the Marvel movies at the time was the characters. The main characters are morally ambiguous who harbor a dark past. Star-Lord was abducted as a child and trained as an outlaw. Gamora's people were killed by her adoptive father. Drax's family was murdered by Ronan and Thanos. Rocket is a raccoon who was experimented on and Groot, well, Groot is just Groot. And let's not forget the secondary characters. Yondu, The Collector, and even Sean Gunn's character were all fun to watch on the big screen. The only characters who weren't memorable in my opinion was Ronin. Most if not all Marvel villains feature a forgettable villain. It's like they don't put much time into developing the villains and just have some big bad guy as an adversary to the heroes. Ronan's character did however serve to introduce the Kree and Thanos. John C. Riley was cool in this movie too, I just wish they had brought him back for future movies. To my knowledge he hasn't appeared in any sequels and neither does the Nova Corps. I doubt we'll see him back in the role though, given Volume 3 might be Gunn's last run in the Marvel Universe since he'll be occupied with the DCU. But then again I heard there's gonna be a Nova TV show so maybe we'll see him again? Alright, is it just me? Or does Star-Lord lose his southern accent as the movie progresses? By the third act, his southern accent is practically gone. Like, I don't know if that was intentional or, or, or what. This movie had a lot of memorable songs. I'm telling you, James Gunn, he chose his music well. I mean, the intro song when we introduce Peter Quill, where it goes, You know what I'm talking about, right? Or, if you like pina coladas, I mean, this movie had a mixtape that was used as promotional material for the movie, you know, with the songs, but also it was like a part of the movie, you know, like it was an object in the movie that was important to Peter Quill's backstory. How awesome is that? The classic songs used throughout the movie were good, but Marvel always lacks in original themes. It makes the action bland sometimes if it doesn't have memorable action music. Okay. A lot of people hate on the Star-Lord dance-off at the end of the movie, but to me that's one of the most iconic parts. Ooh, child, things are gonna get better. Really gives insight into Star-Lord's approach to life and his relaxed personality. I don't know, I'm just trying to justify the whole sequence, leave me alone. You know one thing I dislike about sci-fi movies sometimes? The ships. I mean, come on, none of the starships are memorable in Guardians of the Galaxy. Not even Quills, to be honest. Like, when I think Star Wars, right? I think X-Wings. I think the Millennium Falcon. TIE Fighters, Star Destroyers, and Jedi Starfighters. When I think Guardians, I think Gamora's beautiful, voluptuous eyes. Guardians of the Galaxy is about selflessness and valuing the things that matter to you the most. The Guardians are ex-criminals and misfits who have selfish motives and have lived their lives only looking out for themselves. Forming this friendship, this bond, has allowed these characters to become heroic and selfless. And that idea continues in Volume 2 and the Christmas Special. And I'm sure it will continue into Volume 3. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. I'll be posting more videos like this one. And if you don't, something bad is going to happen. What? I don't know yet, but I have a plan.